Hello. Thank you for joining us today to look at how Bangladesh uh, went ahead and prepared these national chemical management guidelines for its textile and garment industry and what Bangladesh plans to do with this, how it plans to support the entire industry segment in Bangladesh to move further to implement these practices. To look at this today, uh, we have participants joining from uh, different parts of the world. So thank you for everybody joining us from Bangladesh, but also from the other countries. Uh, perhaps this could be a useful and interesting approach uh, for the associations and ministries in your countries to try as well. To go through this today, we will briefly have a look at what Bangladesh has been doing so far, what overall ambitions and pathways there are. After which, we will get to know the behind the scenes, what happened and how these national chemical management guidelines were established, what was the idea and what's going to happen next with this. For this, we will hear from our colleague, Mr. Faisal Rabi, who's with GIZ, an advisor, but he also plays an important role in the regional program of GIZ on fabric and style, focus on capacity building. Thereafter, we'll see how the national chemical management guidelines compare with international standards and frameworks like the HIG FEM and the ZDHC CMS DIG. But the guidelines are for application. So we'll hear from the perspective of a brand from Lindex, where uh, Mr. Kazi Iqbal will be sharing with us what are their plans on how they are communicating with their supply chain. And finally, for all those facilities who have ambitions to be part of the international network of textile and garment industry, who want to adopt international standards, how they could rely on the NCMG and then go further and faster with supplier to zero. For this, we will hear insight from Mr. Klaas Nudbom, who leads the activities of the ZDHC implementation hub. So to start off, let's look at Bangladesh and the textile industry. What we see from this chart is Bangladesh's uh, threads are tightly woven within the entire supply chain of garment uh, and textile. But even more so when we talk about the wet processing activities of dyeing, finishing, washing, where we see almost a third of activities are taking place in Bangladesh. So that also gives us an idea why about half of the participants today are representing either tier one or tier two factories, along with a brand and retailers who are sourcing from there. But it also includes our peers from testing um, industry. It includes development corporation organizations, NGOs. And we also have a presence of a lawyer today, perhaps from the perspective of uh, the due diligence laws, which are going to be implemented and how it would apply to guidelines on a country level. So, so what it means, um, in addition to the topic of uh, chemicals and water, is this greater focus on emissions. With technology, uh, thankfully, I'm back again. So what we see from, from this graphic here is that this increased focus on the topic of carbon emissions and how the activities on tier two that require chemicals and water are energy intensive and hence the implications on emissions um, and hence the increased focus of brands, governments and so on. So perhaps there is somewhere a nexus of chemicals, water and energy, which needs to be uh, exploited or taken advantage of. It is exactly for this purpose we will see that the tier two um, segment of the industry has multiple initiatives uh, working on providing tools, providing guidelines, what's visible here. Yeah? At the same time, focusing purely on the topic of chemical usage. We see again, there's a host of framework and standards on product level like GOTS, uh, on overall process level like ZDHC, but also programs such as the PACT initiative or uh, Stevie initiative on water, 
or the recent activities in terms of the fashion industry's charter, which are looking at how there can be better efficiency of chemical energy water usage. The signs at the moment are positive. When we talk about all of those aspects and we look at Bangladesh using data from ZDFC's Detox Live platform, what we see is uh, almost all facilities who are registered on the ZDFC wastewater gateway and who are reporting uh, the outcome of their wastewater analysis show up as green. So the outcomes are positive so far. But still, based on your feedback during registration, we see that facilities in Bangladesh are going to continue investing on the topic of chemical management because potentially of the links to energy use, water use, and overall quality. We see at the same time that international programs from UNEP have continued focus on the topic of chemicals, waste, education, as an example over here. So with all of that happening comes the topic of trade. Finally, uh, Bangladesh being an integrated player in the global garment textile trade, it's important that these practices allow it to benefit, allow its uh, manufacturers to benefit. And this is exactly what was communicated on Monday when Bangladesh was uh, hosting a meeting focusing on climate, but also how principles of sustainable supply chain should be integrated in commerce and trade. With that as backdrop, and when we talk of trade, comes the topic of money and finance. This is also an area where we have seen investors like the Good Fashion Fund have went ahead, have signed up an MOU with uh, BGMEA, mentioning that if there are factories, facilities, interested in resource efficiency, sustainability aspects, then they will be getting preferential treatment in terms of loan terms. So with all of that happening, we now talk about the National Chemical Management Guidelines. So at this stage, we are curious to know if you can please provide your feedback via this poll question. When you came across the National Chemical Management Guidelines, this announcement that Bangladesh has a draft, it's going to be implemented. What were your thoughts? If you could please select, were you feeling, wow, awesome. Finally, a major textile producing country is taking the lead and establishing guidelines for chemical management for the sector on a country level. Were you feeling, oh no, please, please stop. We don't want another chemical management guidelines. Let's not do it. Were you feeling, hey, why can't all these countries put their differences aside and come together and set up like this common set of guidelines? Or, or do you, based on what you have seen of the guidelines, you feel that it's an excellent guidelines. It combines the best practices and the best from ZDHC, SAC, UNEP, GIZ, REMC, and so on. Or um, are you new? to this concept of the chemical management guidelines. And, and perhaps you are interested to, to see, to learn, to hear a little bit more on what it is about, why it was developed, uh, how it's going to be implemented so that you'll be able to decide um, how you take action with this. So we'll have the poll open for five more seconds. If you can please select uh, your choice, that will allow us to get a better feeling. All right. Uh, Ryan, can we have the results then? Okay, so thank you. A lot of you, uh, more than half of you, would want to know a little bit more about the national guidelines. And I think for that, uh, this is perfect. Then we have Mr. Faisal Rabi. Uh, Faisal, could you please uh, share with us uh, why it was developed, what happened, and what's going to happen next? Sure. Thank you, Rakesh. And also thank you everyone who has joined today uh, in today's webinar. I was just looking at the number of participants and it's quite steeply increasing. And I feel really great that the National Chemical Management Guideline has been able to draw such attention from the crowd. Um, so I will start my presentation here. And uh, while I'm starting my presentation, I will probably look at you uh, and will ask you the same question. Uh, that do you think uh, a national chemical management guideline for a producing country is necessary? 
so think about it and probably at the end of my presentation i will ask you the same question and again and you can see if there is any difference in that uh, so as you can see on the slide uh, slides uh, from German Development Corporation, GIZ was supporting Ministry of Commerce in Bangladesh to develop this National Chemical Management Guideline for textile and garment sector in Bangladesh. Uh, Ministry of Commerce has been very kind. They have called us themselves and wanted to know whether we'll be able to support that. They know the work that GIZ has done previously with ERMC Toolkit and others and our ongoing effort and support to the uh, Ministry of Commerce for textile and leather industry in Bangladesh. And uh, of course, we thought it was a necessary step. But why did we thought it's a necessary step? Why do we need a national chemical management guideline? So as you see, th there are three wheels in this screen. I should probably patent this because uh, I, I think over the last few months, this is something that I've been preaching to many webinars, many meetings, many seminars, like how can we bring change in a sector? So the three most important things to me is number one you have to have improved legal framework you have to have improved capacity to uh, to enforce this uh, legal frameworks to practice these legal frameworks and of course number three without which all of this seems pointless is the improved profitability so if a new uh, intervention does not help you make more profit then rationally it does not make any sense for you to adhere to that new standards and I think one of the very reasons that JDSC has been very successful, he has, is becoming successful, or probably NCMG will be successful, that it will, it, these all will, and these all have very direct connection to your market access, to your sustainability, to your business. So before, uh, when we started discussion with Ministry of Commerce last year, were there any uh, chemical management guideline available in Bangladesh? Apart from the one that are internationally and regionally accepted, can Department of Environment in Bangladesh go to a factory and tell them that, look, this is the Bangladeshi regulation. This is the Bangladeshi policy. You need to follow that. No, they did not have that. And without that, authorities has been facing difficulty like which regulation they should suggest to refer to, which guideline they should refer to. And uh, unfortunately, those international and regional standards are not statutory policies of the country. However, that, of course, does not mean that we should develop something that is completely new uh, from what is already there. So I'll come to that. Uh, before that, we know we have different brands and buyers in Bangladesh. I, last I heard, I think more than 200 brands or small brands are at least working in Bangladesh, probably more than that. And they all have their own requirements. Some ask uh, to follow JDAC, but they, some still have their own set of policies. So someone have their chemical management policy, some have their MRSL, RSL policies. How do you manage your inventory? How do you handle it? So there is no uniformity in it. Of course, JDC and other international platforms are trying to bring this uniformity and good practices, but it is still there are some areas to work on. Then there are many international standards like JDAC, Detox, Amphory, Blue Sign, Reach, GOTS, Ocutex, probably more. And requirements regarding these are varying from brand to brand. And as I said at the beginning, there is no national chemical management guideline available in country currently. But the question comes again, another guideline. We already have so many guidelines coming from the brands. We already have so many uh, uh, trainings. Uh, it's, often it's often very difficult to find uh, the sustainability officer from a factory free because he is either busy with his work or he's busy with some training. And uh, I, when I work with the factory management, they're often like, I'm crazy, I'm getting crazy. So many meetings, so many trainings, how can I produce the target? So to shed this fear from your mind, NCMG is not asking for anything new. It just sets the national minimum requirement for Bangladesh to be followed by the factories and to be enforced by the authorities. So it refers to the international standards and guidelines often, which you are already implementing. And anticipating, we are anticipating that the document will be revised regularly. So January 2nd, we had this big consultation session where many brands were present, many factories were present, many international organizations were present. And the first thing I personally asked the additional secretary, Mr. Hafiz, would you be establishing a committee that will look after this guideline? Because one year down the line, whatever we have developed could be obsolete because there is something new coming in, new chem chemicals coming in, new management principles coming, how we were going to incorporate that. We have suggested this, 
we are negotiating with them and let's hope that we can get there since class is already here and probably uh, he will be pointing out more on this but i thought i should take the opportunity to point out that there are a lot of similarities between gdsc and our ncmg gdsc chemical management system guidance manual were considered where we are developing this ncmg ncmg is already covering most of the requirements and regarding mrsl conformance among other lists jdc mrsl list was also referred in ncmg so what we suggest is that our national chemical management guideline from bangladesh complements jdc guideline and possibly further aids its spread so what are the salient features of this national chemical management guideline i will not go into the detail and bore you this document is available over online you can all give it a read i can uh, probably uh, uh, forward you a link to the document as well later on if you have not read it already in the draft but if you look at the salient features there are 10 technical chapters covering all chemical management related guideline included international regulations and references were reflected international supply chain references were reflected we have provided six templates or forms to ensure data management related to chemical management and we have also provided relevant guidance reference and training material which are provided as an annex so this is another big headline uh we like it or not so far i think uh correct me if i'm wrong jdac and these st international standards are only enforced if we use the word only enforced in export oriented factories but in bangladesh chemical is not only used in export oriented factories there is a local market there are local producers and not only textile and garment industry there are many other industries in bangladesh and if you look at the gdp growth of the country the industrialization rate of the country without the without the support of such a regulatory framework without enforcement from the uh, department of environment without their capacity development we don't see any actual change happening to these industries and for this we felt that the national chemical management guideline probably can fill this gap too and these are the list of 10 chapters that we have in the national chemical management guideline uh, first one is good chemical management practices then we have using reliable information sources on chemical substance and mixtures etc etc i think i do not need to bore you with all these details but you can add later look at this document uh, we have provided six templates or forms as we have mentioned uh, we provided the inventory list template. We provided waste inventory templates, training records, participation records, health checkup record, and of, of course, the accident and incident logbook. Now, if you look at the overall timeline, uh, we started our preparation back in February 2021. Then we have our first consultation meeting on March 21. Then we had a technical committee and subcommittee formed by uh, Ministry of Commerce on April 21, for which I am personally very grateful for them, and which was a very rapidly working, very dynamic technical committee, which was fantastic. And April 21, we proposed the first structure of the National Chemical Management Guideline, following which we prepared a first draft, and uh, a series of focus group discussion was organized with uh, producing companies, with brands, uh, with chemical uh, uh, producers and also with business associations such as BGMA, BKMA, and BTMA. Then, with all their comments and feedback, we revised uh, and further shared for comments uh, for, with the stakeholders our first draft of the chemical management guideline. We received a lot of comments and feedback from them, and we were uh, uh, revising it continuously until December 2021. And then we shared with all of the uh, participants of the second January consultation, then the consultation happened. And right now, although uh, we have said during the consultation that we will only take two weeks before finalizing it and you should send your responses, uh, we are still collecting some responses because I think uh, it does not hurt if it is one month late, but at least we should cover everyone who is there and who feels they have a, uh, a stake on it and can share their feedback on that. So right now, uh, following this meeting, I will also be joining another meeting with Brands Forum in Bangladesh, where I will be presenting again this exact same presentation and will be asking for their feedbacks uh, because there are some uh, brands who probably have not uh, participated in those uh, uh, consultation session back in January too because of their holidays, etc. So we wanted to give them an opportunity. Now, 
what's next uh, for this i don't have a slide re ready but probably i can speak from my mind like what we have planned first of all in february we already have organized a uh, training session uh, the tra training was for department of environment officials on this national chemical management guidelines so that they can know what are the salient features how they can implement it, how they can enforce it and uh, the level of understanding regarding chemical management i believe is not at the optimum level among this uh, department of environment officers so we would like to encourage them to learn more etc so this is what the first thing that we are doing uh, we are also uh, we have also developed already a training program for uh, service providers and national chemical management guideline which will we be rolling out very soon as soon as we have the green light from ministry of commerce and Furthermore, we are planning with BGMEA, like how can we uh, spread this document among their partner uh, member factories and also with BKME and BTMEA all to, to all their member factories. And also Department of Environment, we always kind of think about Dhaka, but there are 64 districts in Bangladesh. And I think many of them has chemical uh, uses. And to this uh, Department of Environment offices, we would like to reach as well. And it's going to be a comprehensive capacity development program for Department of Environment. So let's see. So I think I have took my allotted time and uh, that's it from my side. I will be very much happy to hear for, from you. My email address is here. And if you want to reach me out in the chat box as well, I'm here. And I would now like to know again, as I requested at the beginning, uh, how do you feel about this new chemical management guideline? Do you feel it is necessary or not? Thank you very much. Uh, Faisal. I'm curious, while our fellow participants uh, pop up questions, do you know if any other textile producing country has a national chemical management guideline for its textile industry? Um, as far as I know, there is nothing so specific for a textile and garment industry. This, there is always a chemical management guideline like in India, you yeah. know, for, for the overall country. So right. our initial intention was also to address the overall country, but then Ministry of Commerce said, no, let's first address the uh, textile and garment industry. Probably that's because there are already some hope through JDAC and others who are working with uh, textile factories in Bangladesh and uh, export oriented mm -hmm. factories have already some speed. So they just wanted to use that momentum. And pro uh, one thing I missed, thank you for this question, because that reminds me that, that we are already in discussion with Department of Environment in Bangladesh on developing a chemical management tool. And definitely mm -hmm. that will not be limited to textile and garment industry, but also to the overall industry, uh, which probably will refer back to this document, this National Chemical Management Guideline, as a guideline document that you can use in your factories. And I think a lot of it is not only relevant for textile, but also for other industries as well. But we'll see yeah. down the line whether we can make some further amendments to make a document that is applicable for all uh, types of businesses. Thank you. And, and one last question, Faisal. We often hear the term, what's the recipe for success? How did you develop this chemistry between all stakeholders? Many brands would be thinking of planning and organizing something for chemical management, and then they realize the different stakeholders that they have, both internally and externally, in one year. It is quite rapid. So was it because you found the right group of experts? Was it you had the right motivation? How did you manage it during COVID? What's the secret sauce? What was the composition? What was the chemistry behind? Thank you for making me sound so great. <laughs> but uh, probably uh, the biggest uh, strength that we had is Ministry of Commerce. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, people often will tell you that it's very difficult to work with government offices. But I would tell you that you just need to find the right pulse. You just need to find the right people in there. And they are always interested to work and they're very motivated. And the deputy secretary, the joint secretaries that I met, even, even the uh, additional secretary, uh, just to probably tell a small story, like on the January 2 event, uh, at one point, the additional uh, uh, secretary himself came to the stage and he took the lead that I will ask, uh, I will take questions. I will run this moderation because he felt the importance of this document. He felt how important it is for Bangladesh. And probably Ministry of Commerce is so connected to export, so connected to textile and garment industry. And you know, over the last two decades, the Bangladeshi industry has faced a lot of issues. Starting from Rana Plaza, there are many, many obstacles that they have faced. So uh, we know the importance of this sector and we all are trying our best and that's probably the recipe for our success. Okay, thank you, Faisal. So, Wakil, 
uh, Faisal made those uh, bold uh, claims and saying, hey, all these international standards have been adopted. We are not asking anything new. It's all of that. Surely some of the factories and local brands are going to contact you, Wakil, and said, hey, uh, Faisal Bai said, uh, no need to worry, nothing new. You don't have to do much more if you're doing. Um, I think they want to see a little bit more. Can you take us through that journey based on what you have seen with uh, HIG FEM verifications, how to HIG trainings, ZDHC uh, detail analysis, and the guidelines? Where do you see as a similarity and how do you see uh, both of these weighing against each other? If you can please um, take us through this uh, short overview, okay? Yeah, sure. Would you like me to share the slides? Okay, would you like me to share the slides? No, I can. I think the internet issue is there. Okay, I will go ahead and share it. Okay. All right, ready, Wakil? Yeah, sure. Okay. So we so tried to, we, yeah, ahead, yeah, please. please, yeah. So we tried to, you know, figure out what are the things at the very beginning during the registration period, we asked all the participants that what are the existing standard guideline or uh, standards you are currently being following. So we can see that most of the participants are following GOTS, then OCOTEX, then HIG FEM, then JDS supplied to zero. So mostly in for this webinar, we tried to focus the relation between the uh, chemical management guideline and the ZDC CMS TIG. And also we tried to figure out the relation between uh, this with the HIG FEM. So these are the very common standards. You can see that uh, in the previous slide, we see that HIG FEM, then BEPI chemical management audit. And uh, these are the very common activities right now factories are being following. So in this slide, we can see that there, are, as uh, Faisal already told that there are 10 specific sections in the uh, and CMG, uh, whereas in uh, JDC TIG, there are specific nine sections. And if we uh, try to figure out that the heart of the relationship, we can directly find out that there is almost very, very information common. Similarly, you can see that uh, section one is covering the section five and section two is covering information from section three, five and six of TIG. Then and similarly for section three is similar to TIG section three. So in this way, you can easily uh, figure out the relationship of JDC and TIG and NCMG. So here we try to give a numeric uh, figure on our qualitative assessment. So if we consider the uh, JDC, TIG and, and BDNC, NCMG, so what is the commonality or what is the difference in the information based on our, our our thoughts, but it is it is subjective. So maybe you can hear we have mentioned that and the information in the chemical inventory. Uh, if we consider the BD and CMG, so their information you can say 50% uh, compared to that of JDAC, TIG. But this 50% maybe for yourself you, you can think that no, this is not 50%. It can be uh, either 70% or 80%. So this percent can be. Uh, varied person to person, but we try to figure out that if there is any change of information in a qualitative perspective, like for example, here in TIG, the related information with, uh, in terms of chemical inventory is more than that of similar thing in the uh, BD and CMG. Similarly, in an in a opposite case in the 
bottom part, you can see that related to the safe storage and transport of chemical, ZDC, TIG uh, information, you can say coverage is 80% in terms of the uh, same information of BD and CMG. So here you can see that more information is covered in terms of safe storage and transport of chemical in NCMGs. So this way we try to, you know, show what are the, specifically if we talk about the inventory you can see these are the inventory that has been suggested by bd and cmg so this information at least you should maintain in your chemical inventory whereas you can see in the zdsc tig there are more information are being recommended so you can, and if you specifically focus on the aspirational level so the, in the aspirational level all the information is additional so as it is in aspirational level that means it is kind of industry best practice in terms of information management and apart from that the, the, TIG also, you know, subdivided the information of your inventory into three categories like a foundational level, progressive level, or aspirational level. So similarly, if we go for the next thing, like uh, for chemical compatibility, so both of the uh, information in terms of chemical compatibility in NCMG and uh, TIG is almost same, but the more information that has been covered by the NCMG is they have also suggested two, you know, already developed chemical compatibility chart that can factory be used instantly. So this can be instantly used by the factory. And so without developing their own chemical compatibility. So this is the additional things of uh, you know, NCMG in terms of chemical compatibility than the uh, ZDSC TIG. Now, if you want to know more about the similarity so these are the coming two slides so where we try to give a you know comparative qualitative analysis and try to give a numeric number so as i already said this numeric number can vary person to person but if we you are saying for example for uh, option two the use of using reliable information source on chemical chemical substances and mixtures if we think about that so their information uh, compared to uh, for us it, it looks 10% less than that information of ZDC CMS TIG. But any other person can say, no, it is not 90%, it can be 80%, it can be 95%. So this human to human or person to person vary can, but uh, variation can be there. But we try to show that what are the common, like let's say at least 80% information is common between them. And similarly, you can see we have added one another column that if we cover this into a section that what, which question or specifically for chemical related, which question is being covered by the HIG FEM. Like if we see in the uh, section six, uh, so the section six, the question is directly linked with the uh, HIG FEM question, chemical question number six and nine. And uh, similarly, if we go to the uh, EMS section, so EMS uh, question eight and uh, question 21 is related with the section nine of uh, BD and CMG. So if we call it, now if we consider the same thing in related with the solid management in both MC, NCMG and TIG, so here you will find both the you know, guideline is giving the same information or they are giving uh, or they are showing the same requirement to the factories. But uh, if we consider this thing in the HIG FEM, where in terms of uh, waste management, uh, waste disposal method has been given also good good importance in, in this HIG FEM. So, and this is also mainly covering the uh, you know, aspirational level also. So here, HIG FEM also is to ask factory to maintain their baseline of their disposal method. Then after that, they want also a factory to set their action plan or improvement plan, improvement target, then improvement plan. And finally, they also uh, expect that factory will, you know, uh, do a year by year, you know, improvement or in, do a year by year improvement on the on the on the sector of uh, waste disposal. Apart from that. Uh, in HIG FM, it is also focused that at least 90% of your factory's waste that is going to the landfill incineration or, and or to the environment should be you know, diverted to a more sustainable uh, disposal method, for example, recycling or reusing. So this is also a uh, question in the aspirational level of uh, HIG FM. So here they're also giving good focus on the disposal of waste. Now, if a factory now what can factory does for example if a factory is following already following some guideline or some standards for example ZDC CMS TIG or HIG FEM or BEPI chemical management audit or BEPI so 
and if they already achieved 75% score or if they achieve a progressive level of uh, DC supplied to zero program, then we can see they already are covering at least 95%, not 95, at least 80% of the requirement or expectation of NCMG. Whereas if factory has not been started uh, implementing any existing guideline or any existing standard like HIG FEM or BEPI or ZDC, then they can also focus or start their working by implementing this NCMG. And if, if they can uh, you know, implement uh, almost 100% of this NCMG, then we can easily say that at, at least 70% 70, 70 of HIG FEM or progressive level of ZDC supplied to zero is covered by that. So you can see that if you're already implementing something, that means you are already in you know at a good level uh, based on the expectation of ncmg and uh, other way if you don't or if you didn't do anything so far you can also implement that uh, ncmg and which will you know take you a certain level of other standard or get this is applied to zero great um Wakil, thank you very much yeah. for taking this deep dive and for this comparison of of seeing really how these standards are complementary and can aid and support each other. Thanks a lot, Wakil. Yeah, right. Thank you. Now, having heard um, about the background of NCMG and how it's uh, similar to these international standards, let's hear from one brand, Lindex, on what has been their experience in um, being part of the NCMG consultation and what are their plans in terms of rolling it out and discussing with their supply chain further. For that, we have Mr. Kazi Bal. He leads the sustainable implementation aspects for Lindex in South Asia. So, uh, Iqbal, if based on all that you have done over so many years, if you can compress it at about 10, 12 minutes and share with the audience, what are you doing with NCMG and what are your thoughts in rolling it out? Okay. Thank you so much, Rakesh. Uh, so let me share my screen and just confirm me when you can see it so that I know you can see it. So I believe you can see my screen. Yes. Okay. Uh, I just maybe it's gone. Okay. So yeah, thank you so much again. And thank you so much uh, the audience also. So uh, we will index. Uh, we are a Swedish fashion brand and just to share with you that for uh, Bangladesh, Bangladesh is very important market for Lindex uh, within total um, sourcing operations of Bangladesh, almost 40% of the goods uh, um, sources from Bangladesh. So it's really very important market and we really uh, are very curious to know about when we just started to hear that um, the Bangladesh is going to have a national chemical management guideline, we're really very curious and we are eager to be part of that initiatives because really Bangladesh is a very important market for us. So let's see what Lindex chemical goal. So Lindex chemical goal is to remove the release of all hazardous and toxic substance from its supply chain and promote transparency and the use of more sustainable chemistry. So basically three, uh, the triggering uh, trigger point uh, that um, stop the release of hazardous and toxic substance uh, and then promote transparency and, and find the best alternative. Or more sustainable chemistry. So we have three salient, salient uh, reason why we um, choose this aim or why this high level aim is, is selected for us. Uh, to us, the absence of release of hazardous chemicals is very critical criteria for wastewater management. And it's also very important part of uh, Lindex responsible water management. So we uh, basically look on the um, uh, hazardous chemicals in our wastewater, in the wastewater generated. And we want to be ensured that, that um, through proper uh, chemical management, our supply chain partner, and they um, are able to release uh, wastewater with um, safe criteria or without, without existence of any hazardous chemicals. Then it's also important for Lindex in different angle. The absence of hazardous chemicals is, uh, is also critical. Uh, basically, uh, Lindex uh, is driving the brand towards circular economy, so or circular uh, fashion. So that's why we wanted to um, uh, want our supply chain partner so that, uh, to ensure that they use right chemicals. 
and then the absence of release of hazardous chemicals is also very criti uh, critical criteria for us because we take care the, our the health and safety of uh, workers and also we wanted to ensure human rights and fair workplace sanction so basically in all three dimensions and we um, look on the chemical and that's basically we try to compare that with national chemical management guideline and we do some internal um, as uh, what do we say evaluation of the go -go, uh, tools and as i told you that we are basically engaged from the beginning so we don't uh, did not want to miss any part so that's what we call it. Um, I call it as we are actively engaged. And from the beginning, we share um, the Lindex chemical management guideline, what we have right now in our hand, we share with the, the, the group who are the expert group who are in the process of preparing this chemical management guideline. We, we share our uh, RSL, MRSL, product safety guidelines. I just um, mentioned here. So whatever we have whatever expectation we uh, or whatever uh, expectation we have from these guidelines we share with them and then I, I myself and my team member we also actively participate in the consultation workshops so in focus group discussions in the uh, the broader um, the consultation um, group we participate and try to give the um, input and once the draft national chemical management guideline is prepared so uh, within the index, we uh, review it um, internally uh, through um, our sustainability developer team all over the world. So they um, just compare side by side what is in the uh, uh, index uh, chemical management guidelines and what is in in national chemical management guidelines of um, Bangladesh, like Wakil. How Wakil did that? We did the, did the same exercise within the company. And uh, the sustainability developer team all over the world, they give their feedback, what is missing or how, what can be improved. And, and in turn, we also share the same things with the, the group who are uh, in the process of preparing these guidelines. And then we conducted an internal workshop and uh, to know the view of uh, the next sustainability developer team i'm just referring sustainability developer team they are the main uh, key role player in the uh, in the company so they work with the supply chain partner or uh, the the factories to implement um, the chemical management guidelines or any environmental protocols so so their feedback is very important for us and so and then we uh, once we did this workshop conducted these workshops so we get some points which we uh, then um, the one the important point was that how we can adopt or how can use make um, how can we ensure the best use of it so let's see and then the the perspective that the first thing is that we are positive as i told you so bangladesh is really very important for us for an important market for us and we always not in the favor of getting any new standard so as always, as I don't know. So, but anyway, uh, we really value um, the the land of the law. So it's really uh, very important, and for us. And uh, when uh, we came to know about the National Chemical Management of Guideline of Bangladesh, and then it was just a relief for us that the the, the country has its own guidelines. So uh, based uh, on which we can rely on. So it's really uh, we take it as a positively. Uh, and but there was some as I told you that uh, the sustainability developer teams or Lindex Global Sustainability team, there are still some questions uh, come uh, come in our mind that as far as content wise guideline is okay it means that the three chemical uh, goal or area which you consider the transparency sustainable chemistries and worker health safety we found that it can it can um, meet our expectations along with our existing standard so and then the the questions that comes usually is that who is the owner of these guidelines so from faisal bhai we all i already came to know that most probably the ministry of commerce would be the the owner of these guidelines so we had some confusions from the the other country team that either it is the department of environment or ministry of industry or ministry of commerce but that question we believe that that will will get the answer and i'll get some hints from faisal bhai and then 
the one other thing is that uh, you also the wakil um, uh, and faisal touched this point that who is responsible for implementing these guidelines and is there any role of business association bkma bzma and btma i think um, in course of time we'll be able to know that so and what is the procedure for update so that was also important um, uh, questions which comes from uh, sustainability team all over the world from that basically the sustainability ambitions and the expectations it's, it's increased day by day. Obviously, the, the new expectation comes. We are also strengthening our sustainability promise goals. So, and then uh, most probably that questions will also know that if Ministry of Industry Commerce is the owner, obviously they will play some roles and uh, the GIJs and all the uh, industry um, uh, association, they will also have some roles to update these things. So, and in fact, what is said that we really appreciate these initiatives and and we want to be part of these initiatives obviously we are part of these initiatives but we want to ensure that this um the guidelines is, is used as a land of the law uh, law of the land and then and approach then we uh, how we approach these tools within our supply chain so basically this is this tool is mainly for bangladesh so and the first point i just wanted to share with the audience and you rakesh and all that the first question in lindex environmental assessment is that whether the factories comply with local national legislation or local national guidelines so this is the first question of our environmental assessment so until and unless we had this national chemical management guidelines the sustainability developer teams or auditor the only mark is not applicable now we didn't need to say that is not applicable it's applicable so it's best things for us and we are nice to see these things and then then the next process so we have environmental assessment from we just analyze or we just do side by side um side um what do I say comparison what is there and what is in our environmental assessment form so our next step is to just to improve our environmental assessment form if anything we missed but it's in the national chemical management guidelines so that we will include on the other hand what we have more than that national management guidelines that is obviously the, nothing we need to do because then um, we have more stringent um, uh, requirements than the national chemical management guide but we are very much um whatever say the concern about the local law that if we miss anything in our in our national uh, in our environmental assessment form so that will do and we are also we also took an initiative to compare it with our, our other country production countries and uh, local legislation whether we just started to ask the other countries uh, office also we have um, production office in uh, hong kong china india and then other um, in uh, turkey so we started to the, our local sustainability developer team they started to ask the factories whether they have any national local chemical management guidelines so that uh, the teams can compare that with the environmental assessment tool also so and and then as i don't know then the best thing is that once um we are officially just bangladesh will started to implement this rule and so we'll also started to just do the follow the same procedure we'll also started to implement these things and uh, national environmental uh, national chemical management guidelines in our supply chain and for all uh, all time these tools is will be used as a resource materials in index sustainability department so i think uh, i um, clearly described what the index expectation is that and obviously um, if any of you have any specific questions uh, regarding the index approach for national chemical management guidelines you can ask me thank you so much rakesh and thank you so much the audience Thank you very much, Iqbal, for, for sharing your perspective. And um, what was clear was from your perspective, it's positive and that you're going to utilize this uh, to communicate further. Thanks a lot. Now, Thank you. taking all of that together, we heard about the national guidelines. We heard about the comparison with international standards, what a brand is saying. There were two interesting parts. And I think, class, uh, you can wrap it all up for us. The first part was, uh, Faisal mentioned, there are many factories who are involved in export 
but there are many factories which are not involved in export that are not exporting or working with the large global brands. And he said the national guidelines which set this new minimum standard. What we heard also from Iqbal was he mentioned, well, we will also share the best practice with our colleagues in other countries. Uh, perhaps it can be relevant there too. And ZDHC had this interesting position where you have a membership of multiple brands, multiple large manufacturers uh, who are addressing the overall supply chain. So from your perspective, for these new suppliers who are just getting on to national chemical management, implementing this, how do you see this link together with supplier to zero? How could they use that as a, as a starting step to be part of the overall larger supply chain, perhaps, mm -hmm. and show. And secondly, we heard about chemical management, but we also heard about waste and energy. Could that potentially be linked with what supplier to zero is planning with resource efficiency? So if you could briefly introduce uh, to the participants, knowing that 81% of the participants, registrants have mentioned that more than half of their inventory is MRSL compliant. So they have some understanding of ZDHC, yeah? So class, uh, over to you. Yeah, thanks Rakesh. So um, as uh, ZDHC's implementation uh, direct, um, um, we are hearing, or I am hearing a lot of these, these questions. And supplier to zero is really offering a great opportunity um, for suppliers, even if they are not involved in export and in dealing with the bigger international brands. It is designed to enable everyone to take ownership of the chemical management journey. And this is also how I see this links in with the national guideline, um, because in the end, it enables a supplier to understand what is their role, what can I do? And then the supplier can showcase how well they perform. So that's our approach, um, bottom up, um, enabling suppliers to, to, to deal with the requirements that they face across the board. And um, waste and energy are for us uh, part of the deal, because if you look into waste management, what is the waste that needs to be managed most? It's chemical waste. What is the, what is the um, potential in, in, in energy savings that you can have from, from factory operations? Yes, you can, um, well, install LEDs, that's fine. You can put uh, solar on the rooftop, but in the end, you can only have the big savings if you look into chemistry and how chemistry is applied. And so, of course, these are the hot topics for us as CDHC. And um, with our supplier platform, um, we would like to enable suppliers to get the benefits from doing uh, sustainability work. Um, so this in a, in a short form. Um, but um, now let's have a look at, at um, what, uh, what I prepared also for the session. Unless, Rakesh, you have another question for me. No, no. Uh, let's go through uh, this graphical overview. Okay. So, um, as you see, you see nothing. There we go. So, um, yeah, um, how to ZDHC is, uh, is, is a topic of my little talk in, in relation um, also to um, the national guideline and how you can, as a supplier or also as a brand, use the Roadmap to Zero resources and Supplier to Zero to roll out um, sustainable chemical management, um, in this case, also related to the guidelines. And before um, I, I start into that, just a little, uh, you know, um, step back and uh, introduction of ZDHC. So our vision is the widespread implementation of sustainable chemistry, driving innovations and best practices in the textile, apparel, and footwear industries to protect consumers, workers, and the environment alike. So here you can really see how we would like to also um, engage in, in the drive that this national guideline can create, because widespread implementation is our focus. So um, we already heard from Rakesh that a lot of the factories say um, they have uh, MRSL uh, conformant chemistry already. I have prepared two poll, uh, poll questions that I would like to run now. Um, and um, maybe uh, Ryan, you can start with the first one already. So the poll question number one is, if you, um, it doesn't matter if you're a brand or a supplier, if you ever participated in a ZDHC Academy training, or if you already received a supplier to zero certificate, maybe. Um, please take a moment and say yes or no, um, so that we can have a little bit uh, a better overview of um, where everybody's at. And uh, Ryan, please signal if you think we can um, head on to the next one. 
All right. So we see that um, there's still great potential uh, in further engaging um, with the academy or um, supplier to zero. And in a second, we will see how both are linked to the same topic of the implementation of our central guidelines. And I've got a second poll question for you, which is related um, to ZDHC events. So have you ever attended a ZDHC regional conference already? And again, a quick yes or no, so that we know um, if I may have uh, met you already there. And Ryan, if you think everybody has responded, I'm curious of the results already. And also there, overwhelmingly, no. Um, so um, in the chat, I just provided the um, save the date um, shared by our regional director for um, Southern um, Asia, um, that the next regional conference is upcoming at the end of April, and you're all invited to join. Um, more information will follow. But back to my presentation, and um, let's have a first introduction here. So what is ZDHC? ZDHC is a, a multi-stakeholder initiative um, that is engaging with a large number of international and also regional associations, um, solution providers, but also textile footwear industry, which means suppliers that are on board um, to also provide feedback and the drive to um, improve chemical management in the industry. On board is also the chemical industry and of course the brands. But this is only a small picture um, of the, um, the companies working with CDHC. These are the members, these are the contributors we call them because they contribute to the future of the organization and um, um, the um, direction the organization also takes. Um, but there are many more working with our guidelines and um, uh, our um, solutions and platforms. And so um, even if you are not um, on this board as a contributor, you can use the, um, the, the, the guidelines, et cetera. That's the main core message. You do not need to become a contributor. You can use most of it um, if you are also um, simply part of the industry because it is our mission to provide these uh, platforms and tools to the industry for um, sustainable chemical management implementation. What do we provide? So we have um, three kinds of things um, that we would like to focus on. Uh, we always like three things. So we have um, the guidelines, which you see on the um, first level. Guidelines are the documents you find on our website. Well, it's pr pretty similar to the national guideline, a document that sums up what needs to be done and also provides guidance um, how it should be done. Um, and for the implementation of the guidelines, we also provide the right platforms. Because in the end, um, for certain things like exchanging on wastewater tests, for example, you are needing a platform to communicate with the laboratory, but also with your brand partners. And um, this is in, in the case of um, the wastewater testing, the ZDHC gateway but also on the input chemistry. You know, the MRSL is a super great guideline, but in the end, you would like to know what are the chemicals I can buy. And the ZDHC gateway and its chemical module provide you like the yellow pages of chemicals. This is the one you can buy. And this is at level one, level two, level three. So this is our um, offer to the industry to work with the platforms. And the solutions are these ones um, at the bottom. So we have the Clearstream report for the wastewater testing, a unified report to show brands, but also suppliers on a very quick overview, if there are issues, where there are issues, and they help um, um, the, the suppliers and uh, also the brands to understand how to overcome the issue. And we have the InCheck report um, to look into the chemical inventory as a certificate that the chemical inventory is conforming to a certain degree with the ZDHC MRSL, an automated report provided by third parties that, is, uh, that are also listed on our website. You can contact and they digitalize, help you digitalize your inventory and cross-check this, uh, this with the gateway. But the core topic of today is with the CMS, our chemical management system and the guideline, which we say is our process level. So what needs to be done? Um, and we provide two platforms in this area. Um, it is the supplier platform with the supplier to zero, which will be the focus of today's um, um, introduction. 
And we have the ZDHC Academy, where you can also um, uh, link up with uh, training providers. TÜV Rhinet is one of our approved training providers. And you can, can, can get a ZDHC Academy certificate um, for, your, for the efforts you uh, put into learning. Um, but in the actual implementation, this is our concert of guidelines, platforms, and our solution for the industry. And the great thing about this, you can use most of it for free. So you can use the guidelines from the website. You can go to the um, academy, have first introductions. Well, then you need to book your uh, session with a training provider. Supplier platform, you can access for free when you have access for the gateway, um, which is easy to get. And there's also an, a way to get it for free for all suppliers. And then supplier to zero um, provides you with the insights um, into the guideline also for free. But um, let me take a step back. What is the technical industry guide? And Vakil already introduced it. And I thought um, this was already sufficient in depth. So I take it only at a superficial level. Um, we have two guidelines um, online. One is the CMS framework, which is the what part. It's very superficial. It only tells you what needs to be done and provides very brief um, information on, on how this could be done. It can help also brands to understand how to form our own chemical management approach that links in with the ZDHC environment. But the real diamond of our work is the technical industry guide, because this is the how part. This is the part where we describe for the suppliers and the manufacturers how chemical management should be implemented. And um, this is a very intense document um, with over uh, 130 pages um, and a lot of illustrations and practical guide. And it really sets everyone up um, from the beginning of the chemical management system journey in preparation and planning with our chapters on policy, strategy, and assessments. And it builds up um, through actions and implementation related to health and safety, the chemical inventory, which is, as Vakil pointed out, um, at the core of our interest because uh, we are very keen on chemicals um, and uh, storage and handling. And then also we address the, um, the topics in uh, terms of review and update. So looking into output management, um, process control and continuous improvement. So this is um, a very, uh, intense and and uh, and deaf um, uh, information that that uh, is provided by the chemical indus uh, industry guide, our core um, guideline. So the question for us was also how can we make it a little bit easier for the suppliers? And um, this is why we started um, with supplier to zero. It should be the entry gate um, to um, sustainable chemical management or how to ZDHC for all the suppliers. Um, it should be the vehicle for the rollout of, of our chemical management system. And it enables the suppliers to see the connection of the ZDHC guidelines, platforms and solutions from the wastewater guideline to the MRSL, our chemical management system. And in the end, it also provides suppliers with a clear pathway to implementation leadership. So you will learn step by step how you can improve and how this can be done. Okay, well, how can this be done? Well, um, the platform um, takes um, the information from the ZDHC gateway supplier profile, where a supplier is telling the, the platform, I am a die house, I'm a tannery, I'm a printer, I'm a vertical integrated uh, facility. And then the platform actually provides, um, based on this profile, a, um, a tailor-made questionnaire, um, a self-evaluation, so that the supplier understands how the things are relevant for them. So instead of going through 130 pages, you are asked um, simple questions. And um, then you receive um, uh, re recommendations, how you can improve if you say, well, I'm not sure if I have this in place already. And this is, this is really important um, that uh, suppliers take this self-evaluation as an honest um, um, opportunity to get feedback on how to improve. If you always say, yes, sir, I have this in place, no worries. I think this is the wrong approach. You should always doubt yourself, look into the system because this is the place for suppliers. No one is watching. You can take your time and also really consume the information that we provide. For example, on chemical inventory, the question in general is, are all the chemicals you use um, listed 
and maintained in a Chemistry inventory list. If you're not sure what this means, you can click not completed yet. And then you get a recommendation that clearly explains what needs to be done, how it should be done, provides you with the templates you need. Um, and the templates are also pretty similar to what is listed in the national guideline um, in, in certain areas. And this recommendation on top provides you with an explanation of what is the investment it takes to implement this? Does it take some effort? Um, or is it easily done? And what is the payback? How much is this appreciated um, by, the, by the brand partners or uh, by own operations? And you will learn from this, well, the chemical inventory list um, can, be, can be implemented and maintained without any costs. It takes effort, yes, and it does, um, but the payback is immediate because brand partners will be happy your operations will run more smoothly and you can make um, use of the um, efficiency gains you see from maintaining the chemical inventory. And um, this is the real advantage of the platform, that it breaks down the complexity of the guideline in easy chunks that you can digest in easy um, performance improvement actions. And Supplier to Zero works on three levels, foundational, progressive, aspirational, and two of them are already launched. Um, and um, the foundational level is the one that you can um, enter for free. So you can benefit from all the information in the foundational level for free. The only thing you need to do to uh, advance to the progressive level is confirm um, that you have uh, completed the foundational level questionnaire by um, submitting. And then um, you need to purchase the um, certificate so we can um, pro um, progress in the progressive level. But the um, access to the information is already for free. And this is part of our general um, improvement cycle that um, as we say, supplier to zero is the entry gate to the sustainable chemical management. The training you are um, um, you, you can access at the, um, at the academy will complement the learnings from the platform. And uh, in the future, we will even be able to guide you to um, um, approved experts that can provide more information and um, we will link in um, also with the SAC, um, FEM, and other systems and help suppliers in terms of reporting. And I think we are already a little bit out of time. <laughs> I see Rakesh is already knocking. Um, but I just want to highlight that uh, more information is available on the ZDHC Academy, as well as um, um, our other resources. And as the main one, I already provided some links um, in the chat box to the knowledge base which is like our um, FAQ living document um, where you can go and uh, see if your question has been asked before. And we provide you step-by-step -step guidance on how to get things done. Thank you very much for listening in and uh, please reach out to us if you have any questions and join our conference at the end of April. Thank you very much, Klaas. Um, I was nodding uh, to also just let you know that this webinar is being recorded. <laughs> and that when you said we are also going to link it to SAC, and we're like, oh, okay, wait, hold on. And all the data will be integrated or interconnected. And I'm like, wait, many, many on the call are waiting for that. Yeah. So uh, to get your uh, feedback moving ahead, based on what you've heard about the National Chemical Management Guidelines in terms of how it was developed, uh, what the similarities are with existing international standards and frameworks how brands are planning to implement it and how based on these national chemical management guidelines, brands could go um, or factories could go even further by linking their progress onto the ZDHC supplier to zero platform and thereby indicate to their wider um, industry segment on uh, that they are ready and that they are progressing um, based on a standard that uh, many in the industry are familiar with. So. Thank you for your feedback. Uh, we see that over half of you mentioned that you will be studying the guideline in more uh, details. And that uh, you also mentioned that uh, you will work with a standards developer to make sure that a reference to the national guidelines is added to these new standards, yeah? Uh, Ryan, perhaps you can share the results then, yeah? Okay, to take this topic further, while we focus today on uh, the chemicals aspect um, and the management system when using chemicals. The next area of focus will be how can textile waste, both on post uh, 
production, post-industrial waste, and post-consumer waste. How can all of that be linked together, uh, can be part of this overall ecosystem, such that more of this is recycled and more of this is going back into the, uh, into the feedstock, let's say. Uh, if you all are interested, then uh, feel free to participate in this webinar. It takes place on the 1st of March. Uh, you will also receive a link to this webinar in the chat box. And uh, before we end then, uh, perhaps a short feedback from all of you, from our panelists. Uh, thank you, Klaas. Thank you, Faisal. Thank you, uh, Iqbal and Vakil, for, for sharing your insights. Based on the feedback you received from Paul, Klaas, in, in the case of ZDHC, we saw that almost three quarter of the participants mentioned that they have not had a chance to participate in a regional meeting. Um, and that they have not yet received either a ZDHC certificate or supplier to zero. Would you as ZDHC, in addition to inviting the participants to the regional conference, do you plan to organize some more country level activities then? To oh yes. Go next to them? There are some coming up. Um, so in addition to the, to the big regional conference um, in, uh, on the 29th of April, run by um, my dear colleague Prasad Pant, um, there will be also um, um, well uh, some some conferences in uh, Sri Lanka, uh, in Bangladesh, etc. So we will have some more coming up that uh, will be announced on our website or um, on LinkedIn. So um, please stay tuned. Um, follow Roadmap to Zero account on LinkedIn or also the Implementation Hub account, and you will learn about these news um, the first. All right, thank you, and and uh, um, Iqbal. Would you be willing to share your experience in the consultation process and your plans also with uh, other brands um, so that maybe all of them can have a harmonized approach communicating with the supply chain on NCMG? Yes, um, basically, um, we are just working Lindex, uh, within the Lindex now just to yeah. finalize what approach we will um, uh, we'll do with the supply chain. And then the next step is to basically uh, to see to uh, our uh, industry peer and, uh, because in any factories, Lindex is not alone. So we have other, the other brands we have overlapped with us. So mm -hmm. we'll um, have some consultation meeting with the other brands also soon. And then I uh, will see that what is their feedback. But for us, it's really important. And we uh, will um, officially communicate with the supplier to, uh, very soon, maybe ne early next month to just to have these guidelines, to study this guideline and to see what they are and to prepare themselves. And then I will see the next step. Got it. Thank yeah. you. And Vakil, are you planning some more uh, local consultation sessions on supply to zero and links to NCMG maybe? Yeah, if factories are very much interested to you know, know more about supply to zero, we will definitely be planning for some more, more sessions, yeah. Okay. Uh, while Faisal had to uh, leave for another meeting, uh, I want to thank you, Klaas, uh, Iqbal, Vakil, for taking the time for preparation, for sharing your experience, your insights, and your wisdom, and, and for Ryan to making sure everything works uh, seamlessly. To all the participants, my apologies that we went uh, over time. Uh, thank you for participating. Thank you for all the questions. Uh, please take care, and uh, we will see each other and hear each other soon. Take care. Bye. Yeah. Bye.